Hi guys and welcome back to my Journeyman save. Um, it's been, well it's been longer than five months. It, I was meant to come back and did actually record a video, an episode that was the day that I actually signed for this club. But there was some sound issues, the sound didn't record for some reason or another. I've managed to fix that now obviously. Um, so we are a bit, quite a bit further in the future than I would have liked. But hey ho, we'll just get on with it. Um, so obviously last time I saw you, we, well, saw you, you heard me, we were um, sacked from KR Reykjavik. That was on the 29th of July 2018, as you can see there. And it took us five months, just about. We were applying to, to many different teams. We applied to a few teams in Russia, Tom Tomsk and Shinik Yaroslavl. We managed to get interviews with them as well, but we weren't what they were looking for. And as hard as I tried, we just can't get out of Iceland at the moment. Um, so I was applying away at loads of jobs and then I, I just had to bite the bullet and apply for jobs in Iceland as well. And Fran came in for us on the 9th of December, 2018. Um, now, Fram have just been promoted from the Icelandic First Division, but they are no strangers to the Premier League, as you can see here in their history. They, they have been in it, finishing as high as fourth in 2009. Uh, just relegated the season before last, but they finished first in the First Division, gaining promotion straight back up to Iceland's top tier. Obviously, I signed in December, so there's a few games to run through, a few transfers also. Um, but we'll just go through through the club a little bit first. So they were founded in 1908, semi-professional, obviously, as all Icelandic teams are. Uh, the stadium is called Fram Stadium, creative, I know. Uh, they're also based in Reykjavik, so that means we haven't actually managed a team in Iceland that's not based in Reykjavik. A lot of them actually are based in Reykjavik, so it would be, you know. Um, but our capacity is quite a lot, it's 8,947. I will never expect us to get that capacity, at least not in the next five to ten years, if we manage to stay at this team for a long time. Um, and in terms of media prediction, obviously because we just promoted, we expected to finish 11th. But something interesting about the Icelandic league that I've noticed, or at least there's definitely one team that I've noticed this with, is that the newly promoted teams tend to do quite well in their first season. Um, how will I do this? Oh yeah, so first division, so, so look, so, f well they didn't do very well, but from IBV, so IBV in 2016, they got promoted, IBV and Phil Kier got promoted in 2016, so see how they did in their first season back up. There, IBV finishing second. Phil Kier, obviously, you know, finishing the relegation. So IBV managed to get second in their first season back. And then it was, who was it? Was it HK? HK came up the next season. They got relegated. But but you see the general idea, HK and Keflavik and then ourselves and Thor have come up this year round. Um, so there is, there is the possibility that we can challenge for the top it's not our expectations our expectation is to fight bravely against relegation not even avoid relegation so i could still be in with a job come the end of the season even if we get relegated as i think i have said to activate the icelandic leagues again where's iceland oh no i haven't well i think i'll actually do that just in case Vision. There we go. Confirm. So the reason for all them leagues activated is basically just to find me a job anywhere but Iceland. But that didn't work, unfortunately, as I've said. Um, so uh, should we take a look at the transfers? We should. Okay, so my thinking was not to go crazy like I did with KR when I first joined them in like signed an entire squad worth of, worth of players. Um, I really only wanted to sign a few players, but it was dictated by the fact that the majority of our players were non-contract players. And I don't like having non-contract players because obviously they can they can just be taken away if they start performing well. So I, I tried to sign all of the, the good non-contract players that we had, 
and released the rest of them, but had to release some of the good ones too because they didn't want to sign con full-time contracts with us or they couldn't agree a deal with us, whatever the case was. Um, so that's what all those free transfers going out there on the 7th of January were. And in terms of incomings, I've managed to sign, what is it, nine... Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine new players to the club. So Hilmar Trosti Arneson is the first of them. Central midfielder, his coach report says he's two and a half star, so he's a he's a pretty good player. Um he's he's quite old. But I think he's he's gonna be he's gonna be a good handy player for us this season. He's got no no international experience or anything like that, but he's he's a, like a Pretty good free kick taker. Um, obviously, I think we're playing. What did I decide on? They're either ball winning a box to box, and deep lying playmaker. So he's pretty good for that. He obviously he's getting old, so some of his attributes are decreasing his agility and strength. But um, and he's never really had the technical ability. But he's a good backup, if nothing more. Next up is I thought Helgi Bergeson, who funnily enough is a guy that used to play for Fram. He must have got released at the end of last season and I immediately signed him back on a free transfer um, as you can see he's, his best season was in the first division with Viking girl Olofsvik but hopefully that can he can replicate that form obviously he wasn't that bad last season 7 goals in 16 games isn't too bad 9 and 24 is not that great but 7 and 16 is not that bad um, so he's a striker we've brought in next up on the same day, we signed Svein Sigurdard Johannesson. We didn't actually have a goalkeeper on our books. So this guy was brought in to be our first choice goalkeeper. As you can see, two and a half current ability, four star potential. This kid is going to be pretty good for us at least. He started his career at Stjarnan, but did he... Yeah, he played five times for them and conceded six. Played seven altogether and conceded six. Um, obviously, they, they didn't need him. And he didn't have a club last season, so he's joined us now. He's 24 years old. He's got one in the 21 cap for Iceland. And his his attributes are, are pretty good. 11 handling, 11 kicking. So definitely looking forward to him eventually playing first team football. I say eventually, and I'll explain that in a second. Next up, we paid some money. We paid £1,500. I know, very expensive. For Gunnar Mar Gudmundsen from Fjolnir. He is a defensive midfielder. He's being brought in for his bit of international experience obviously one cap for iceland he is 35 years old so i doubt there'll be many more of them coming his way if any but he has got pretty good stats too obviously defensive midfielder need to be able to, to tackle so he's got 12 and tackling his passing is not too bad in 11 heading 12 finishing is surprisingly good as well in, in 11 also so again a handy player for us uh signing from fjolnir where he spent the majority of his career Next up is an Aussie, very young Aussie in fact, Aidan O'Neill, 20 year old centre midfielder. I got him on a free two, originally from Burnley but he never played any games for them. And this guy, he, he looks amazing to be quite honest. He says he's got potential to be a key player for the team, three star, current ability, three and a half to four and a half star potential. And some of his stats are amazing. His passing of 15, he's like one of the best passers in our team, if not the best. First touch of 15, penalty take, he's a good penalty taker. His technique is brilliant. And really looking forward to see, seeing what he can do for us. Obviously only 20 years old as well. He has got a few under 20 caps for Australia. So he may, he may be in one, one to watch. Next up, we signed someone who also has, a, this guy's got a wealth of international experience in fact. And... I know him. Well, I don't know him personally, but like I've know of him. Demi Dizieu, uh Dutch centre midfielder. He's he's been around a bit. I'm just looking into his history. So he's he's been been in Holland, been AZ, Alkmaar, Ajax. Then he then he started travelling to Russia with Spartak, Anderlecht in Belgium, Bre NEC Breda. He has been around, but he is a very good player. Um thirty five years old though, and I kinda guessed this would happen when I signed him, before I signed him, the same with uh, another signing that I got as well. He's retiring mid-season, he's retiring at the end of June or the end of July, one of those two. Um, but I just think his, his, one, his ability and his experience will help us in the, the first half of the season, really. Um, 
obviously you can see in terms of attributes why do i always try and say attributes it's not the way to say it um you can see in terms of his attributes they're they're pretty amazing for he's probably one of the better players i've had um first touch 16 technique 16 marking and passing 13 you can just see that most of them are in double figures obviously he is decreasing in ability his marking's gone down to 13 work rate down to 11 but it's still really good and when was it? it was just five seasons ago he was he was winning the belgian first tier with Anderlecht. so hopefully he can bring that winning mentality with him for the, for the half the season next year the second player that is retiring is Arta Boric who I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with obviously he's from Southampton Celtic Bournemouth um, and this guy will be our first choice keeper for the first half of the season until he retires at the same time as Demi Dizieu but you can see by his stats there's no need for me to explain anything look at those he's got 15s and 16s and he's, he's just going to be a solid goalkeeper for us He's only valued at £20, that must be because he's retiring. It's quite funny. Uh, next up, Goodmundur Rainier Gunnarsson, another guy with international experience. Um, he is a left-back. He's got three Icelandic caps, 321 caps. His four-star coach report, uh, tackling 10, passing 11. In terms of like, how we play wing-backs, his crossing and dribbling are very encouraging on 13. Acceleration and pace also very good. And... He, he was actually at Strom's Godset last season and won the first division with them, Norwegian first division, which is, I think that's rated higher than the, the Icelandic Premier Division. So hopefully you can bring some of his experience in, in of playing in a better league to help us. Um, then the final signing that we made was for almost £50,000, £49,000, and he is an FM legend in my eyes, Abdullahi Belbagi. There was a save I did, and it must have been FM 11, FM 12, something like that, with Dover Athletic. Uh, I managed to get them from the, the Conference South to League One, something like that. And Abdullahi Belbagi was key in that. He, he's, just, he's just awesome. Um, his current ability and potential ability have actually increased since I signed him. Well, at least one of them has. Obviously, I don't think potential ability yet can increase. Maybe I just misread it wrong, but I'm pretty sure they told me not to sign him when I signed him. But hey yo, he's one of our better players. He's uh, international again with Sierra Leone, 13 caps for them. And you can see we have played one Upper League Cup game, and he's managed to get himself 7.7 .7 rating in that game. Uh, he is will be well known to people who follow the non-league of English football as well as maybe a few of the, the Football League fans so he's been at Tranmere, Bristol Rovers he's been, been around he's a, the definition of a journeyman and he's only 26 is he? Yeah, he's only 26 years old so he is definitely going to be an amazing player for us in terms of games that we played we played four friendly matches and one competitive game the friend first friendly match was against Igear, which we won 3-1. Bell Baggy scoring on his debut. Olofsson and Bergeson getting the goals too. Next up, we drew 2-2 with Afterelding, who are in the Icelandic second division or something embarrassing like that. Bell Baggy and Sveinsson getting the goals. And we lost to Fulkier, who got relegated with us, I believe. So they, they're still in the Icelandic first division. And we drew with Reinier Sangirdi. 1-1, one, one, which is again an embarrassing result. Uh, the first competitive game of the season was played. This was actually supposed to be a live com, and I did record it, but again, microphone issues and all that. Um, so it was against Keflavik, first game of the Upper League Cup, which, as you know by now, I don't regard as important, but I would actually like to, to start playing well in it. That would be nice. And we did play really well in this. We deserved to win, in fact or at the very least get a draw. As you can see, we took the lead with Bergson on the 4th minute, they equalised with Robertson on the 53rd minute, we took the lead again with Sveinsen on the 67th minute, and then with 4 minutes of normal time to go, they drew level with us thanks to Trousterson, and in injury time, the last minute of injury time, Sigurdsson just stealing a victory for Ketlevik. You can see, we, we just about edged on possession, we had more shots than them, but not a very good shot accuracy, but in, in my view, we... We deserve to win this one. You can see Bergeson was man of the match with an 8.8 .8 match rating also. And it was just annoying, really. 
would have been nice to start off with a win. But it is what it is. Um, let's continue that. I was worried there that we weren't on the right thing. So we've got Sindri today here in Division 1, the league that we escaped last season. Okay, so here we are for the game. And we're four to seven favourites for this one. And Park June from ESPNFC.com says that he believes we have enough quality to see off Sindri. Sindri are four to one. Uh, obviously only game one game played by us so far. And the rest of the teams have actually played. So if we win, we can move up to fourth above KR. It will be with a two goal victory. Uh, the key man for Sindri is their goalkeeper, Sandor Modler. It's always encouraging when a goalkeeper is a key man. Uh, he's not, I wouldn't say he's that good really, a Hungarian. So if he's their best player, that's quite encouraging. Obviously, I think we've played Sindri a few times and struggled struggled against them. So we're playing the 4-4-2 today. We've got Arda Boric and goal. Martinson and Gunnarsson are the wing-backs. Ratchet Zak and Christiansen are centre-backs. Belbaggy on the right-hand side of midfield. Olafsson and Arnesson in centre midfield. Sveinsson on the left. And then Atal Geisen playing the false nine with Bergeson as the complete forward up top. Demi Dezio on the bench as well as Aidan O'Neill, the, the youngster and the, the old workhorse. So we will just do the team talk quickly and get into the match. When it wants to. There we go. And we kick off. No, we don't, because we're not red. Why would I even think we were red? Unless I was thinking we were Vikings. But no. Never mind. Um, okay, so Einerson's got the ball for Sindri. It's Thor Steinson. Dokra. Through to Einerson. He was offside, fortunately for us. Martinson with a throw deep in their half. Throws it straight to their player though. It's Einerson for Sindri. Plays it forward, looking for Snorrison. Ratter Zach covers well. Gunnarsson bringing the ball forward. Sveinton's not going to get there though. That was a terrible pass. Dokara plays it down the line to Snorrison. Ratter Zach collects that comfortably, but gives it away straight away. Oh, we'll have some of the good tackle. This is just going to be one of those games, isn't it? We get the ball and then we just give it away. Helgerson on the left hand side. Come on, someone tackle them. Not be happy with a defeat. Benedictson to Dokara. Einerson. Snorrison over the bar. That was fortunate. Okay, five minutes in and they're absolutely all over us like a bad rash. Thor Steinson plays it to Paulson. Dokara, Einerson. Snorrison, who's had one chance already, gives it to Dokara. Good save from Boric. That's what he's there for. And... Um, Going to demand more and may in fact switch to attacking. <laughs> Depending on who the next highlight is for. Looks like it doesn't even look like we're coming back into this yet. Give it to the 15th minute and then I'll just go kamikaze attacking. Okay, we've got to throw deep in our own half towards Bell Baggy, who flicks it on to nobody. Okay, Palson now to Einerson, and that was a highlight for them. So that means... Doo -doo -doo. We go attacking... Thinking maybe we should change formation. <laughs> it looks like we're getting into the game a little bit more. If it sounds like there's a spaceship t taken off, it's just my um, washing machine. Modler with the goal kick. Sveinsen picks that up. Long ball for Woodland for Bergeson. Haraldson defending well, but Sveinsen's got it again. Crosses it in. Atal Geisen 1 0. 
Boom! Against the run of play. Half Thor Mart Elgiason. The false nine. Putting us out in front against Division 1 Sindri. Great stuff and completely undeserved. Martin Sin throws it at Elgiason. Belbaggy shoots nearly. Corner with Arneson. Rashazak was there, but it's headed back to Arneson. Crosses it again. Adel Geisen's there, and Bergeson was there as well. belbaggy has got it still, and Davankovic tackles him. This is more like it, though. Getting more chances now. Arneson crosses it in. Headed away by Ivankovic. Martinson collects it, gives it to Belbaggy. Through to Adel Geisen, looking for a second. That's blocked. And Sindri can get rid. Free kick with Arneson. No one here. A lot better since uh, since we went to attacking though. A lot more chances. This looks like it could be a chance for them. Oh no, they've misplayed the ball. It's Bergeson to Adelgeisen. Possible opportunity for us now. Well, Baggy on the on the wing crosses it back post. Bergson's there, but Haraldson heads a clear. Olafson now just finds him with a bit of time. Shoots over the bar. Modler with a goal kick for Sindri. He keeps hitting it that way towards Feinson. Happy with that if he does that all day. Gunnarsson long ball towards Bergson. Was that a shot at goal or just a terrible flick on? I think it was a terrible flick on. There'd be something wrong with him if he was shooting from goal from there with a the header. Bergeson, though, gets the ball, plays it out wide right to Belbaggy with a chance to cross it in from deep. Which he does. Atal Geisen, oh, he's hit the post. And then it's cleared by Haraldson. He's looking like our danger man today. Martinson with a throw. Belbaggy with a chance to cross it now. He does. Haraldson's cleared it only to Belbaggy. Gunnarsson. He tried to play to Bergeson, but Haraldson intercepted well. It's Gunnarsson again to Arneson. Sveinsen on the left. Switches play to Belbaggy. He plays it to Adelgeisen, and Adelgeisen kicks the ball for defender. Possible chance for Sindri, if only they could keep the ball in play. Almost half time, and we have turned this game around very well. Obviously, we're never 1 0 down or anything like that, but in terms of stats, we've crossed the ball in now, and that's cleared. Bergeson's got it, though. Belbaggy, oh, he took his time to compose himself as well, brilliantly. It's unfortunate it was straight at the goalkeeper. But as I was saying, we've turned this round very well indeed since turning to play attacking. Uh, Sindri were all over us in the the first part of the, the first half. We've done well to overcome that. Olafsson's sharpness isn't the best. Um, bring Demi on. Bit of experience in the, the centre of midfield there. And we kick off for the second half. The ball's played straight to Belbaggy on the right. Switches it beautifully to Sveinsen. So he plays it back to Belbaggy. Belbaggy with a chance to cross. Oh, he gets tackled by Thorson though. That was a nice bit of play between the two. I'm just a bit concerned at the, the number of chances that we've had and not taken. It's rather reminiscent of the Keflavik game in the previous match with Demi with a corner. Roger Zach's there! Oh. It's a hit for ball. Oh my days. Another corner, Arneson. That's headed clear. We need a Bergeson. Arneson with another chance to cross it though. Towards back post. It's headed clear. It's used there. He shoots and it's saved by Modler again. Another corner with Arneson. That's cleared. Arneson with another chance to get it in. 
Fraser de Swainson, Rotter Zach, oh, that's intercepted. Looks like that's probably the end of the highlight, and it is. What I was saying was I'm concerned that it's going to be the same as the Keflavik game where we were on top, but we give it away in the last few minutes and end up losing. Let's hope not. We are actually, our possession stats got better. Honestly, some of the free kick that time, just as bad as the one in the first half. Well, just as high, a bit closer to the actual target. The ZU plays it out wide to Bell Baggy. First time cross cleared and Horizon is the ball at the back for Sindri. He gives it to Oskarsson. Thor Steinson. Sindri with a chance to build from the back. Dockera. Horizon back to Dockera. That's a bad pass. A bit too much power on that one. Haraldson. Long ball towards Snorrison. It's Ineson now. Plays it back to Snorrison. He plays it through to Ineson and this is going to be an equaliser. What did I say? 15 shots, three clear cut chances, and it's 1 1. They've had three clear cut chances too, which kind of just suggests that we're not doing very well with the, the shots that we are having. Maybe they're all from long range, I don't know. Because they've only had three shots on target, and all th well, you would presume all three have been clear cut chances. Mm. I didn't mean to do that, I meant to go to advanced tactics. Pause the game. I'm gonna we're gonna do a switch in formation. Do we want to do a switch in personnel also? Well, Christians is having a stinker of a game. That must be because he's just let that ball go straight through both him and Ratterzak for them to score. Uh, Arnson's not playing his best either. Uh, I think we're gonna bring Aiden O'Neill on for Arnison, the young Australian. And then I change his one more. Could bring Hill Marson on. Bring Hill Marson on for Feinson. I'm not going to take Atal Geisen off because he's probably been one of he's been our best player. He has been our best player in fact today. And we'll just leave it at that for now. Hopefully we can get back in front and on top in this game because Sindri are coming back into it, it would appear. Well, Baggy, his condition has deteriorated drastically there. 67%. And he's we'll bring Gutmanson on for Bell Baggy, Alagaisen moving out to the wide right. Just under 20 minutes to go at home to a Division 1 side. We need to really start showing our, our difference in class to sides that are below us. Otherwise there's no chance of us beating the sides that are better than us in the Premier Division, which is pretty much everyone bar one. Uh, cleared by Ratic Zak and Ivankovic intercepts with the header. Martinson on the right though. Atlog Iason, forward to Bergeson. Got many options to pass to you. Goes past one. Plays to Adel Geisen. It's Goodmanson. To Bergeson on the right. Martinson. Chance to cross it. Does Hill Marson's there? He maybe should have hit it first time in an Adel Geisen wide. Do in for Sindri. And Thorsteinson wasn't even marked. That is bad defending. Horizon to Thorsteinson. Ball through the defence again. And it's 2-1 to Sindri. Those centre-backs, man. Those centre-backs. Jesus. Ten minutes left. Don't know what this is going to achieve, but... I've only got one sub as well. So I'll take Christiansen off because he's performing worse. And we'll do a, a team talk assertively. Tell them to push forward. The two goals have come from the same thing. The ball splits our defenders, our centre backs. Good Munson. Martinson crosses it in. 
It's headed clear. Aiden O'Neill. Chance to be a legend here. Hill Marson. Cleared by Dockera. And the shot was probably closer to the corner flag than the goal anyway. Sindri coming away with the ball. Bjornsson. That's the end of the highlight. Just over five minutes. Why is that on standard? Why is that on standard? That is because I changed the tactic. I went around attacking. Gunnarsson on the left. Hill Marson. Back to Gunnarsson. Bad touch, but he recovered well. O'Neill. Dezu. Should get there, and he did. Martinson's got a bit of time, but he hits it first time, and it's clear by Ivankovic. Dezu. Oh. That would have been a stunning goal, that one. On the volley from Demi Dezu. Modler with a goal kick for Sindri. Headed towards Bjornsson. Ratterzak heads it clear, though, only to force Steinson. Bjornsson again. Back to Dockerer. For Steinson. Good Laugsen. Saivarsen. For Steinson again. Come on, lads, get a foot in. Can't let them get a third. Reinsen. Savarsen. Einerson through the middle of them defenders again. What are they playing at? And that's a different centre back. That's Svansson rather than the other idiot. Overload. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be one last chance for us. Gunnarsson throws it to Goodmanson. Ratterzak. Gunnarsson on the left. Gives it to Hilmarsson. Plays towards Martinsson on the right. Can he cross it? He can. It's a bit behind everyone, though. Aidan O'Neill's got it now. To Gunnarsson, the wing back. Crosses it in, headed away. Martinson's there. Atal Geisen. Bergerson saved by Modler. And Hill Marson couldn't get in there ahead of the defender. That was our chance. Gunnarsson's got a throw, though. That's headed away by Haraldson. Gunnarsson keeps it in. Goodmanson. O'Neill. Gunnarsson. Terrible cross from Gunnarsson there. If they play one more wall through my centre backs, I'm going to go absolute ape. Absolutely ape shizzle. And it looks like we've thrown this one away as well. 10 seconds left. And Demi Dizzy U gives the free kick away. That's that experience coming in that I mentioned. Not. Oscarson's got a free kick. The referee's going to blow his whistle any second. There it is, full time. And the final score is... Fram 1, Sindri 2. So, two defeats on the bounce in the Europa League Cup. Two games we should have won. And failed to do so. Next game will either be the Europa League Cup knockout rounds or the first game of the Icelandic Premier Division season against Stjarnan. Let's just see where Stjarnan finished last season. So, they finished 5th. And then third the season before and first the season before that. So, looks like they're getting worse. So hopefully they'll be worse than us this season. But anyway guys, that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Feel free to leave a comment below. And thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time.